phone instruction and I know it, but I'm so glad. Yeah. I say happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. To everybody that's in attendance today and everybody that's watching online. Um, to all the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, spiritually and physically. It's a blessing to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Uh, once again, the Lord has taken us from one week to another and brought us um, into the Sabbath day, sisters and brothers, and all of us are still alive. And that's truly a blessing because uh, this has been a rather eventful week. Um, you know, but just like Job, you know, we have to be mindful of, you know, things that come out of our mouth. But we are definitely thankful uh, that the Lord has blessed us to come into another Sabbath day. Uh, with that being said, you know, we all, we don't never start at 2.20. We usually start at 2 o'clock on time. But, you know, from going to Philadelphia to dealing with the emergency with, our, with my daughter, um, to going to Jacksonville to baptize, um, you know, it can be aware on the body. But at the same time, you know, we still got to be about the Lord's business. So for the most part, we start on time, you know. But so much is going on this week. This is why we start a little bit afterwards uh, today. But with all that being said, the Lord's business got taken care of. That's what matters the most. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm still standing before you all today because on the way back from Florida this morning, I was putting the lesson together. Even though I was tired, I still, you know, got to feed the sheep. That's our job regardless. So um, we still got to get the work done. So, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, the different things that, that took place this week, um, you know, for me it was really trying because, you know, going to Philadelphia uh, to preach the gospel and then coming back uh, to Atlanta and then getting down to Florida on Friday to baptize one of the brothers to bring them into the covenant, you know, I know Satan, by the hand of the Most High God will be allowed to go and try us, you know. So in that, you know, the Lord always has a way of, you know, showing you something, you know, in the different trials that you may go through. And I think what I'm taking from this is that, you know, the job that the Lord has called Israel to do, preaching this gospel, it's going to be many different obstacles and different things that's going to come up in life. But regardless of what's going on, the Lord has called us to do a work and this work got to get done. You know, we may deal with different issues inside this flesh and blood body, but that's just like, you know, when Jesus told the, the guy to come and follow him, he said, let me go bury my father first. And the Lord told him, let the dead bury the dead. What he was saying to him was that, you know, let the physical dead bury the, I mean, let the spiritually dead bury the physical dead. Because I got something that got to be taken care of. You know, so even though the different things we may deal with inside our households and deal with in life, you know, as we go throughout this journey that the Lord has given us, we still got to make sure, being the priest especially, that this gospel is being preached. You know, we ain't, we don't have time, you know, to try to justify and, you know, mope and mourn and all that type. So we're going to look in the scriptures today and see how adamant the Lord is about getting this word out. Because, see, when this flesh and blood body dies, there's something else that comes after it. And that's that everlasting life. So it's important that this gospel is being preached because you, the Lord is, has set up a plan to save mankind from this second death. And in order for this man to find out about him escaping this second death, he put priests in order to preach this gospel, to warn them from the wrath to come. So with that being said, the title of this lesson today is called To Preach the Gospel, You Must Take Up Your Cross Daily. Not when you feel like taking it up, but every day, you know, preaching this gospel, you got to take this cross up. Especially being men of the Lord, we are the priests of God. You know, he set in order for us to get out and preach this gospel. But not only us, when you become a part of this body, women in the body also, you know, you're being watched. You know, the way you carry yourself, your lifestyle is also a way that you preach this gospel. So you can't get weary along the way and feel like you can just stop, you know, keeping the Lord's commandments. You can stop keeping the Sabbath day. It don't work like that. You got to preach this gospel daily. You know, the way you live, the way you walk and carry yourself, this is a minister to the world. This is a light to the world. People are watching you. However, also it goes a little bit further than that because now it's getting to a point where the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So now 
the Lord is pouring out the spirit upon Israel and he's also making ways or setting up means for Israel to get out and get across this world and preach this gospel. So that does have an effect on the physical body. Regardless of that, it still got to be done. So what we're going to do, we're going to get into the word of God and we're going to, you know, look at this and y'all just bear with me today because I'm still kind of out of it, sister, but to be honest with you, you know, I'm just, I just got to take my time. We're going to let the Holy Spirit, like we do all the time, but I can't really, you know, uh, move fast like, a, like I usually want to. We just going to take our time and let the Holy Spirit do what he do. Because I'm still kind of asleep and I'm still recovering, sister, and brother. Like I said, it was a, it was an eventful week, but praise the Lord, we're alive. So we're going to open it up at uh, Matthew chapter 4. And this is after Jesus got baptized. And he was into the wilderness and, you know, he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And now we're going to see how, you know, the, the devil going to come at him and try to get him to go against the Most High God. So Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. And when you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh -huh. So this was after he got baptized. After he came into the, you know, after he showed us what we supposed to do, which fulfills our righteousness, then he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Go ahead and read. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, uh -huh. he was afterward in hunger. Okay, go ahead and read. And when the tempter came to him, he said, Thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. That's right. Now, you know you got that power. You know that you are the Son of God. So Satan going to try to come get him at his weak... Take that camera make sure it's on. Uh, Satan going to try to come get him at his, his weakest point. After 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, now he hungry. So he said, if you be the son of God, uh, command that these stones be made bread. That way you can have something physically to eat on. But let's see what Jesus said to him. Go ahead and read. Because see, keep in mind, Satan is quoting the scriptures. Go ahead and read. As we get further down, he's going to quote the scripture. But go ahead, what does it say? But he answered and said, uh -huh. it is written. Man should not live by bread alone. That's right. You ain't going to live by physical bread alone. We talking about the stuff that you need for this flesh and blood body here. You're not going to live by bread alone because the Lord is letting you know in this scripture here that after this flesh and blood body is something that's more important than this. So you're not going to live by bread alone. But what? But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because this is what's going to take you into everlasting life. But the Lord has put somebody in place to preach this word that you got to eat from. So let's go over to Matthew chapter 10. Let's see what this word was going to do. See what Christ said he came for. Because see, most of the, the word that the world is living off of is not coming out of the Bible. You know, the word that the world is getting is coming from another Jesus. And that's why everything is love. That's why everybody can do what they want to do. That's why everybody can, you know, you can be in a different religion. You don't got to be a Christian. You can be a Muslim. You can believe in Buddha. But everybody can get along because they get another word. We're going to show you what this word does. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. That's right. Don't think that Christ came to send peace on this earth. But what? I came not to send peace, uh -huh. but a sword. And that sword is this word of God. That sword going to cut. It's going to go against everything we've been taught. Read on. For well, I am come to set a man at variance against his father. So notice what the scriptures say. The Lord said, I came to set a man at variance against his father. It ain't going to be no agreements going on. When you get this true word, it's going to be a separation between a man and his father. And what else? And the daughter against her mother. Uh-huh. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. That's right. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. That's right. So the... When you first gonna run into your problem is that when you start serving this true and living God, the enemy is gonna come out of your own household. Not just inside this physical house where you may live at, but we talking about the family that you belong to. That's why you going to Jeremiah chapter 10. He told he said, he told Jeremiah, tell him, speak unto the house of Israel. He talking about the families. So in your family, this is where the enemy is gonna come in at. That's why it's only gonna be few. Like we went when I went down to Jacksonville yesterday to baptize Brother Abdul, that was that's my cousin that I baptized. But notice I got brothers, I got a brother, I got sisters in my family, I got a mother and a father that still ain't came into the world. Because your family 
is where you're going to run into the, you know, the problems that it needed. But go ahead and read. He that love father or mother uh -huh. more than me is not worthy of me. That's right. Go ahead. He that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And that's what I had to take into account this week when we came into the situation. You know, we came into a very, a very trying time, sister and brother, but I, I could have easily say, well, you know, I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to mope about it. You know, I'm going to just, I'm going to just pray and fast and just, you know, until the Lord answer my prayer. But the Lord is telling you in these scriptures that he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He's not telling me to go around saying to my son or daughter, I hate you. You know, I, I'm, I'm constantly... You know, comparing them to the Lord, we're not doing that, sisters and brothers. But in other words, the work of the Lord got to be done. You got to keep on moving, even though you run into different situations. You see what I'm saying? That's what the Lord is letting you know here. He that loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And these are things that mean a lot to you. But the Lord is letting you know that I'm above all of that. Regardless of what you may be going through. Go ahead and read, brother. And he that take not his cross uh -huh. and follow after me uh -huh. is not worthy of me. And this cross is symbol, symbolic of your trials and your tribulations and your burdens that you may be going through every day. You got to take up your cross because if you can't take up your cross, you are not worthy of being his disciple, sisters and brother. Go ahead and read. He that find his life uh -huh. shall lose. That's right. You find your life. Your life becomes more important than doing what the Lord said. You're going to lose it. But how are you going to lose it? In a lake of fire. Go ahead and read it. And he that lose his life uh -huh. say, Go ahead. shall find And this is how you're going to find your life. When you're willing to put down the things that may be bothering you, the things may, that be affecting you on a, uh, may be affecting you on a daily basis, you're willing to put that aside. Not saying that you're ignoring it. But when it comes to the word of the Lord, that has more weight on your decisions. And we have to keep that in mind because this is what makes you a disciple of the Lord, sister and brother. Being able to keep on moving, being able to continually stay in the word of God, regardless of what may come, you know, down our path. But let's go look at, you know, one of the brothers in the Bible that went through a situation and that was trying and lost a lot, sister and brother. Not just not just beasts that Job lost. We're going to go over to Job chapter 1. But Job didn't just lose beasts and animals and things of that sort. And cattle, he lost his family system, bro. This is where the Lord touched his household. And we're going to look at that. Let's pick it up at Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. In verse 1, and when you get it, go ahead and read, bro. There was a man in the land of Uz, uh -huh. whose name was Job. Go ahead. And that man was perfect and upright, uh -huh. and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So that man was perfect, but how was he perfect and upright? He feared God and eschewed evil. Eschewed, eschewed evil. Go ahead and read. And there were born unto him seven sons uh -huh. and three daughters. Go ahead. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, uh -huh. and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Right, so on that side of the world, you know, Job was the greatest man of all the East, sister and brother. Well, go ahead, skip down to verse 6. And go ahead. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Uh-huh. And Satan came also among them. Right, so these sons of God, we talking about an angel, sister and brother. The Satan been cut, cut off from that, so he's no longer considered a son of God. But he's still an angel. He still got to report before the Lord. So there came a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Verse 7, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. Whence comest thou? Go ahead. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, uh -huh. from walking up and down in it. That's right. So what is he walking up and down in the earth doing? We know he's doing something, but let's see what he's doing because the Lord going to ask him a question which is going to imply he's doing something. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. As thou consider my servant Job. Oh, so evidently Satan must be going back and forth in earth, looking to see who he may devour. 
See what he can accuse before the Father. Because that's what Satan does, sister and brother. When he got cast out of heaven, he came down. Now he is an accuser of our brethren every day. We're going to read that. So the Lord said to him, have you considered my servant? Job, go ahead and read. And there is none like him in the earth. Go ahead. A perfect and upright man. Uh-huh. One that feared God and eschewed evil. That's right. So keep in mind, every time we see that word perfect, we also see what? Upright. Upright is keeping them law, statutes, and commandments. And one that feared God and eschewed of evil. But verse 9, what does it say? Then Satan answered the Lord uh -huh. and said, Do of Job fear God or not? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Has not thou made an hedge about him, uh -huh. and about his house, Go ahead. and about all that he had on uh -huh. every side? Go ahead. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, uh -huh. and his substance is increased in the land. Uh -huh. Verse 11. But put forth thy hand now, uh -huh. and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. That's an accusation, sister, bro. That's the same thing the Lord allowed, I mean, that's the same thing that Satan does before the Lord regarding us. This is not a fact what Satan just said. This is an accusation. He said, put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. But go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Uh -huh. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. That's right. So he told him all that he had, you can go and touch it, but upon his body, don't touch it. Don't put your hand on him. So we understand in this story that he lost his sheep, he lost his cattle. The Chaldeans came down and took his camels out. Then the winds of the house fell on his children that was in the house and killed all of them. But let's see what Job's response was after this took place. Pick it up at verse uh, 20 and go ahead. Then Job arose uh -huh. and rent his mantle. Go ahead. Shaved his head uh -huh. and fell down upon the ground. Uh -huh. And worship. And what? And worship. And worship. Now you done lost all your children. You done lost everything that the Lord gave you and he fell down and worship. Not according to what we live in under today, according to the world. You know, you have some people get so bold and start pointing the finger at the Lord. And you got to be careful when you ask the Lord why there's certain things happen. Sometimes, like, like for instance, when, you know, the situation took place with us this week, we didn't know what was going to happen. I, I mean, it, it got that bad with our door. But instead of me going to the Lord and pointing the finger at the Lord and why you this and why you that, I had to go before the Lord and say, Lord, what is it that I have done? Because all the Lord's judgment is righteous, sister and brother. So you got to keep that in mind. Go ahead and read. 21. Uh-huh. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Uh-huh. And naked shall I return thither. So that takes a, a ultimate or a great amount of faith to even have that mindset when something like this done came on you, sisters and brothers. For him to say, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return and deliver. Go ahead and read. The Lord gave. The Lord gave, uh-huh. And the Lord have taken away. Uh-huh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you still blessing the Lord? Understand Job was in the flesh too. He wasn't no more than he was a man just like we are. Mm -hmm. But what he say? He say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Go ahead and read. 22. Uh-huh. And all this Job said not. Go ahead. No charge, nor charge God foolish. That's right. And all of this Job been seen. Even though we know his wife came before him and told him not to go and curse God and die. But he looked at her and asked her, you know, you're a foolish one. But now let's go and keep on reading in the chapter 2 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1 because now we see that, you know, Satan was allowed to touch him. I mean, touch his children, touch his cattle and things of that sort. But now Satan is walking up and down in the earth doing the same thing, trying to see who can get. Now the Lord's going to come at him again. But now we're going to pick it up at Job chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead and read, bro. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Uh -huh. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Uh -huh. And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, uh -huh. and from walking up and down in it. That's Satan doing it again. Now he already done touched Job before. Now he going again. But we see that Job 
then curse the Lord. So now he's going back up and down the earth. You see, that's how that's how Satan works, sister and brother. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Satan will come at you, sister and brother, and then when he can't get you, he'll flee. That's why I tell you, resist the devil, he will flee from. But he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna flee forever. He's gonna come back and he's gonna try and get you in another area. And this is what's going on right now. We see that he touched old Job household and he blessed the Lord. So now he's gonna come back and try to touch Job. But the Lord gonna allow that to happen. Go ahead and read it. Verse 3. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou consider my servant Job, uh -huh. that there is none like him in the earth. Go ahead. A perfect and upright man. Go ahead. One that fear God and eschewed evil. Uh-huh. And still he hold fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him. And still he hold fast his integrity, even though you move me against him. In other words, even though you came before me and said what you said about him, and I allowed you to touch him, I moved the hedges from around him and allowed you to touch him, he still hold fast his integrity, even though thou hast moved me against him. Let's see how Satan moved the Lord against him. Let's go over to Revelation chapter 12. And hold your thing right here. We're going to come right back. Just one verse. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 10. Now go grab my water right here. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 10. And this is when Satan got cast out of heaven. Now he's on this earth. Now the angels in heaven are celebrating that Satan got cast out of heaven. Revelation 12, verse 10. What does it say, brother? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, uh -huh. Now has come salvation. Go ahead. And strength. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom of our God. Go ahead. And the power of Christ. Uh -huh. of Christ. Go ahead. For the accuser of our brother. For the what? For the accuser. For the accuser of our brethren is what? Is cast down. Uh huh. Which accused them before our God day and night. So didn't say make an accusation back on Job. Then he tell the Lord that if you take that head from around and he'll curse you to your face, I told you it was an accusation. It wasn't a fact because Job didn't curse the Lord. Satan accused him, and that's what he's doing with us, sister, bro. He stands before the Lord and accuses you day and night. Well, Brother Nate this, Brother Nate that, Brother Demarcus this, the saints this. Lord, let me touch you. So now let's go back to Job. Let's pick it back up at verse 3 from the beginning. Job 2 and verse 3. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. As thou consider my servant Job, go ahead. that there is none like him in the earth, uh -huh. a perfect and upright man, one that fear God and is skew evil. Go ahead. And still he hold fast his integrity. That's right. Although thou movest me against him. Although you accused him and said things about him, he still hold fast his integrity. But notice what the scriptures say, thou moved me against him. In other words, the Lord moved against Job because of what Satan came and said. So Satan don't have power to do this on his own. Just keep that in mind, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. To destroy him without cause. To destroy him without cause. So sometimes when you're going through stuff, maybe the Lord is showing you really where you at. To send you on that test. To get you ready for something that's going to come even bigger in the future. How are you going to prepare for the great tribulation if you ain't passed these type of tests, sisters and brothers? So look at the things that's in front of you as exactly what they are. A challenge, a test. That's why I say we're going to be tried as gold is tried. and refined in the fire system, bro. So we look at these opportunities that we have now to be tried to see where our faith is actually at. Because it's going to come a time where you ain't going to be able to buy or sell. If you can't buy or sell, you can't eat unless you have that mark. And if that's your only test, more than likely the first go round, you ain't going to pass that test system, bro. So some of the things we deal with as individuals in our own household, look at them as things that the Lord may be sharpening you and getting you ready, sister, bro. You go over the day, you see that the saints going to be beheaded, martyred for Jesus, sister, bro. 
So these are things we have to keep in mind. But especially preaching this gospel, getting out here, going out to the world to preach the word of God, we always got to be about the Lord's business. Verse 4, go ahead, brother. And Satan answered the Lord, uh -huh. and said, skin for skin. I'm sorry, skip down to verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. Behold, he is in thy hand. That's right, so the Lord gave him permission to touch them. Go ahead and read. But save his life. Uh huh. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore balls. Uh -huh. So now we see that Satan done touched Job now. He done touched his body now, sisters and brothers. But now let's go over to Job chapter 42, bring it down to the end of this, because in between that time, Job said a lot of good things. Then also Job might have said some things that, you know, kind of moved the Lord the wrong way. To ask Job, you know, oh man, answer me. Where were you at when I created the heavens and earth? Since you think you know, answer me. You know, but that's as you read in between. But let's go over to Job chapter 42 when the Lord is now bringing Job out of this situation. Because now his friends going to have to be forgiven for what they did, but now they got to go through Job. Because in the trial that Job was going through, you know, his friends made some, made certain comments regarding Job saying to him, well, what did he do? Why is he going through this? You know, I had a bad problem with that when I first came into the Word. You know, I look at some people's situation, the first thing I say, well, he's going through this because he did something against the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But this is what Job friends did. So you see this type of stuff, and you got to correct yourself, but I thank the Lord for that because I don't do that no more. Like I tell brothers or sisters who may be going through something, maybe the Lord just try. Maybe you're just going through something, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he going to... When you come out of this thing, it's going to be a lot better. Like I was talking to my elder brother Elijah the other day. And we was talking about the situation. And he said, man, it's going to come a time when it's all over with. It's going to be like nothing ever happened. And that's how it was with Job. And we're going to look at that. So Job chapter 42, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Uh -huh. So now he brought this off of Job, the situation that he was in. Go ahead and read. When he prayed for his friend, uh -huh. also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Uh -huh. Then came there unto him all his brethren, Go ahead. and all his sisters, and all they that had been of his, of his acquaintance before. Uh -huh. And did he bread with him in his house. And they, and they bemoaned him. Go ahead. And comfort him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Uh huh. Every man also gave him a piece of money. Go ahead. And every one an earning of gold. An earring of gold. An earring of gold. Mm hmm. So the Lord blessed the so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job. He blessed the what? The latter end of Job. He blessed the latter end of Job. Go ahead. More than his beginning. More than his beginning. But he could have easily got cut off from that. All he had to do was say something wrong out of his mouth. All he had to do was put down the commandment and say, Lord, I can't do this no more. I give up, I quit, I'm done. But the Lord blessed the latter end of Job. And in this life, that's what we're looking for, sisters and brother. The Lord blessing our latter end and giving us that ultimate glory, which is everlasting life. Go ahead and read, brother. For he had 14,000 sheep, uh -huh. 6,000 camels. Uh -huh. So remember he had 3,000 and 7,000. So now the Lord done doubled it. Go ahead. And a thousand yoke of oxen. Uh huh. And a thousand she ass. Go ahead. He had also seven sons and three daughters. That's right. Go ahead. So now he got his sons and daughters back. He didn't have more. Go ahead. And he called the name of the first Jemiah. Uh huh. And the name of the second Kizia. 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 And uh -huh. the name of the third Carnapupon. Karen, yeah, Karen Happen. Or something like that. Karen Happen. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. So the Lord blessed him with these three daughters. They were beautiful than all the women in the land. Go ahead and read. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Uh huh. After this lived Job 140 years. Go ahead. And saw his sons and his daughters, I mean, and his sons' sons, uh -huh. seven, even four generations. That's right. Go ahead. So Job died. Being old and full of days. So we see the end of this, the end of this test that Job went through. The Lord blessed him even more than what he had. So the Lord put these things in the scriptures for a reason, sister, bro. The beginning of the beginning of your test is exactly what it is. It's the beginning of it. It's not the end of it. But in the beginning, it always seemed like it's the end of the world. It always can come down as if it's so hard that you just, you know, like you done dropped a brick on your chest and you can't even breathe. 
But that's what you have the word of God for. You look at the examples of people that came before you. And it motivates you and it shows you how you supposed to carry yourself during the trial that you may be facing. So turn over to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 7. Look at what Solomon said. One of the wisest, the wisest man in the world. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Go ahead. Better is the end of a thing uh -huh. than the beginning thereof. And I can definitely agree with that because I remember when I was a kid I used to get whoopings. And especially if my daddy told me he was going to give me a certain amount of licks. It was always dreadful. But when I knew I was almost at the end, yeah, it was better. So likewise, in these situations we're dealing with, you know, you first start going through it, it may be hard. But once the Lord starts bringing you out of it, you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel things become a lot more easier. So it said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And what else? And the patient, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So why is the patient in spirit better than the proud in spirit? Because the patient in spirit develops humbleness, develops meekness. So that's what you want to make sure you're able to develop in whatever you're going through. You're not, the Lord don't just, you know, allow things to come on you just for the hell of it, sister and brother. Things come on you and like I told you earlier, it's the trying. That's why Paul told you in 2 Peter, don't count it as a, stra a strange thing concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as, as though some strange thing has happened to you. So understand that not only are you going to have family and friends that will try you, you know what I'm saying, to see if you really going to stay fast in the faith, or stay fast in the faith, but you're also going to have Satan, which is, the accuser of our brethren every day, trying to get at you any way he can. Trying to find your weaknesses. Trying to find where you got a soft, uh, a, a soft spot at. And some of us don't have weaknesses when it comes to temptation. Some of us have weaknesses when it comes to family, being close-knit and stuff like that. And the Lord see that. Well, maybe that's where the Lord going to try you at to get you even better in his word. Go and read verse 8. Be not, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. And that's why I told you, instead of me, you know, wanting to snap, and that, that never crossed our mind. I wasn't hasty in spirit to be angry with the Lord, especially. You know, you may think about certain things later on as time goes on. You know, things you could have did as a parent to avoid things from happening to your children, like vaccinations. But I, wouldn't, I was never upset with the Lord. I was hasty in spirit to go to the Lord and ask him, Lord, what could I have done or what have I done to upset you? So that's what the scripture say. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. And that's how Job was. Job still did what he blessed the name of the Lord, sister the brother. Go ahead and read. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. Uh -huh. Now, let's go over to Luke chapter 9. Because when I tell you, sister and the brother, you preaching this gospel, especially the brothers that got to preach the gospel, the Lord called Israel to be a kingdom of priests, and then, you know, the nations that come in under the commonwealth of Israel, they got to preach this gospel. You got to walk a certain way. Your lifestyle is a minister for Christ. How you carry yourself, you keeping the Lord's statutes and commandments, you being faithful to the Lord, this is a witness to the nations. So we have to understand how serious it is to serve the Lord. And how serious the Lord is about doing what he said. So let's go to Luke chapter 9 and verse 57. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a uh -huh. certain man said unto him, Go ahead. Lord, I will follow thee whither, whither so thou goest. Whither so ever thou goest. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. Uh -huh. So foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. In other words, they got somewhere to lay their head. But what? But the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. That's right. The Son of Man don't got nowhere to lay his head. In other words, ain't nobody trying to receive him. It's persecution that come with serving the Lord. Go ahead and read. And he said unto another, uh -huh. follow me. So listen to what he said. But he said, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. That's right. So now he's telling him, 
You know, Lord, hold on one second. Let me, let me, let me go bury my father. I gotta take care of this. Let me go bury my father. So let's see what the Lord said. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Let the dead bury their dead. Now this coming out of the mouth of sweet Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, Let the dead bury the dead. That's cold, sisters and brother. But the Lord know that the dead don't know nothing. It ain't no more life when they go down to the grave. They not able to see you burying them. He said, let the dead bury the dead. In other words, you let the physical dead take care of the spiritual dead. But what you got to do, go ahead and read what that say. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Do what? But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. So this is why even though we came into the situation we came into this week, I still got to go do what the Lord say do. Not to say that the Lord don't understand what we're going through, but the Lord got a, 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 a bigger plan than what we see. Even when this flesh and blood body is gone, he still has a plan that's still evolving, that's coming to pass. So what he say? He say, let the dead bury the dead, but go down and preach the kingdom of God. Because what's coming with the kingdom of God, sister and brother? The lake of fire also. So if you don't go preach the kingdom of God, how is man going to have a way to save himself from that lake of fire? Go preach and warn them and tell them, repent. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. So I understand what you're going through. I understand all that. I see all that. But go preach the kingdom. So likewise, we had to come back here. Didn't really have a chance to settle down. I mean, we had to, I mean, it's, it's trying to soak in everything that's going on. But we still got to do the service of the Lord. Now, just think about if I wouldn't have went down there and did what the Lord told me to do, and this brother ended up losing his life. Now, this brother that made a decision to get baptized. I decided to stay home and soak in what's going on, and this brother happened to lose his life. Then I'm going to lose my life in the second death, in the lake of fire. Because this is how important it is to do what the Lord say. He said, let the dead bury the dead, and you go preach the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read, brother. 61. Uh-huh. And another also said, Uh-huh. Lord, I will follow thee. Uh-huh. Let me first go bid them farewell. Uh-huh. Which are at home at my house. That's right. So let me go tell everybody bye. That's like you coming into the world, but you still want to go hang out with your friends. You still want to go hang out with your family members. You still want to sit around that table and bless that pork on Christmas. You can't do it. Go ahead and read. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. No man having put his hand to the plow go ahead. and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's right. If you done came into the position where you were set to do this job and you constantly looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom system, bro. Either you're going to be in or you're going to be out. It's that simple. Now let's turn over to Ezekiel chapter 24 because we're going to look at an example of how the Lord is when it comes to preaching this gospel system, bro. And Ezekiel loved his wife. That's like, you know, a man having a wife, they in the word of God. Like the scripture tell you, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and they two shall become one flesh. The scripture also tell you live joyfully with the wife of thy youth. So Ezekiel loved his wife. I'm quite sure we love our wives. But let's see what the Lord going to tell him. What he got to do. Ezekiel chapter 24. We're going to pick it up at verse 15. Let me get that right quick. Ezekiel chapter 24. We're going to pick it up at verse 15. All right, brother. When you get it, go ahead and read. Oh, he's got to go. I'm sorry. Ezekiel is a watchman. Ezekiel got to go preach the gospel to Israel. Because they kept rebelling and going against the Lord. So the Lord called Ezekiel to go preach this gospel. But let's see what the Lord is going to allow to happen to Ezekiel. Ezekiel uh, chapter 24 verse 15. Go ahead. Also the word of the Lord came unto me saying, uh -huh. Son of man, go ahead. behold, I take away from thee the desire of thy eyes. That's right. He said, I'm going to take away from you the desire of thine eyes. We're going to find out what that desire of his eyes is. Go ahead and read. With a stroke. Uh -huh, with a stroke. Oh my goodness. Did I do what? Whoa. Sound like a physical stroke to me. Go ahead and read, bro. Yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep. What did he say? Neither shall thou mourn nor weep. You ain't don't mourn, don't weep. Go ahead and read. 
Neither shall thy tears run down. So you better not mourn. I don't want you sitting up in your head sobbing about it. I don't want you crying about it. And no tears better run down your face after I take the desire of your eyes away from you. Go ahead and read. Forbear to cry. Don't you even cry. Go ahead. Make no mourning for the dead. Make no mourning for the dead. I don't want no ceremony. I don't want nothing. No make no mourning for the dead. Go ahead and read. Bind the tire of thy head uh -huh. upon thee. Go ahead. Because see, they used to take the things off of their head when they was mourning. But the Lord told them, bind it upon that, your head. Ain't nobody going to know what's going on with you. Go ahead and read. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet. Uh -huh. And cover not thy lips. Go ahead. And eat not the bread of men. So he told him to eat the bread of men. But what did Ezekiel have to eat? The Lord made him eat cow dung. Because he had a heart on his face before he went before Israel. But the Lord toughening him up, sisters and brother, to get ready to go preach this gospel. Go ahead and read. So I spake unto the people in the morning. Uh -huh. So he spake unto the people in the morning. Let's see what that desire of his eye was. Go ahead and read. And at evening my wife died. And at evening what? My wife died. So the Lord took his wife. Told him you better not cry. You better not warn. Don't you even make a mourning for her. Don't. No ceremony. No tears running down your eyes. And you're going to speak to this people. You're going to preach and don't you eat the bread of men. You understand how serious the Lord is about his business, sister and brother? Go ahead and read, brother. And I did in the morning uh -huh. as I was commanded. And he did what he was commanded. That has to be hard. These are flesh and blood people. These are not immortals we're talking about. We're talking about flesh and blood people that hurt like we hurt. This is why the Lord is telling him all the different reactions that come from somebody dying, I don't want to see it take place in you. Take care of my business. Now, let's go look a little further. Let's turn back to uh, Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. Let's see, because the Lord told the priest to do something. And they made these different sacrifices, different atonement for the congregation. And when they did these different sacrifices, the Lord came down among them, and he consumed those sacrifices with fire. And the people saw, and they were amazed. But Aaron's two sons decide to, you know, be overzealous. Sometimes you just got to do what the Lord say. Keep it simple, sisters and brothers. You ain't got to add to the word. You ain't got to take from it. Just do what the Lord say. Because you can be overzealous, and that can cause the Lord to hurt you. Uh, you can be, you know, lazy and slothful in the work, and that can cause the Lord to hurt you. But just do exactly what he say. Now, let's look at it. Leviticus Chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. And Nabab and, Nadab and Abihu, uh -huh. the sons of Aaron, took either of them his senses uh -huh. and put fire therein. Go ahead. And put incense thereon. Uh -huh. And offer straight fire before the Lord. See, they got, got so, so overzealous, they want to go ahead and do their own individual sacrifice. But it says they put incense thereon and offered what? Strange, strange fire before the Lord. In other words, you're doing something I didn't tell you to do. So this strange fire you're doing, this was not me. That's kind of like, you know, the Lord give you Passover to do. How often are we supposed to keep the Passover? Every month. Every month? Every month. <laughs> We're supposed to keep the Passover every year in this season. But you have some of the churches call themselves keeping Passover. They call it communion, but they keep it what? Every first Sunday of the month. Or every fourth Sunday of the month. If you're going to do wrong, do it right. Do it in this season. Like he said. But I really not do wrong at all. But he said, they put incense there on an awful strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. The Lord didn't tell them to do this. They decided among themselves that we going to do this. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. And there went out fire from the Lord mm -hmm. and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. So what happened when they offered this strange fire before the Lord? They went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. But verse 3, what does it say, brother? Then Moses said unto Aaron, uh -huh. this is it 
that the Lord spake. Go ahead. Saying, I will be sanctified in them. I will be what? Sanctified in them. I will be sanctified in them. So how do you think the Lord is sanctified today? Through Israel. The ones that's supposed to be preaching the gospel. The ones that say they came into the covenant. This is how the Lord is sanctified today, sisters and brothers. So likewise, you ain't got time to be sitting up here being overzealous. Just do what he say do. So he said, I will be sanctified in them. What else? That come near me. Uh-huh. And before all the people, I will be glorified. Uh-huh. So you're not going to offer no strange things before me. I'm going to be sanctified in you. So since you want to do that, I got to take you out. And that's what he did. And what else? And Aaron held his peace. Because he's Aaron's son. He couldn't say nothing. He just held his peace. Go ahead and read, brother. And Moses called Meshel and Elzaphan and the sons of Uzel, the uncle of Aaron, uh -huh. and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Right, so they came and got him and took him out of the camp. Now let's see what Moses said. Pick it up at verse 6 and go ahead. What say, bro? And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eleazar, 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 uh huh, and unto Ithamar and sons, uh huh. Uncover not your heads. Go on, do what? Uncover not your heads. And that's what he told Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Don't take the tire off your head. He telling you, don't uncover your heads. What else? Neither rent your clothes. Uh -huh. Don't rent your clothes. What? Lest she die. Lest you die. And what else? And lest wrath come upon all the people. That's right. So if you sit up here, you show any type of affection for what I've done, I'm going to kill you and wrath will come among these people also. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, uh -huh. bewail the burning which the Lord hath killed. That's right. Because remember I told you the Lord sent that fire down there. And pulled up the sacrifice. He said, y'all be well that. Pay attention to what I did. I ain't, don't worry about all that other stuff. You pay attention to what I did. Y'all realize what kind of God we serve, okay? You got to keep on moving. You got to do the Lord's business. So this is how serious the Lord is about this thing, man. And But that's why I tell you, you know, that in certain things that you deal with, you go through, you learn lessons as you go. Cause that flesh and blood want to say, man, you know, I'd rather not just go ahead and chill and give me some time to recuperate and stuff like that. But you can't. You got to keep on going. Because you done already made a vow. You done came into a covenant. You done made an agreement with the Lord. It's kind of like when you get married to a woman when you go before the courthouse. What do you say? Through thick and thin, for better or for worse? Till death do us part? Well... If anybody gonna force that, the Lord gonna force it. Go ahead and read, brother. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle. You gonna stay inside the tabernacle. You ain't going home to cry. Cause you got a job to do. So you gonna complete the work. Go ahead. Of the congregation. Uh-huh. Lest she die. God, Lee, this is cold blooded, ain't it? You know how Israel is, especially they want to go outside and start running and screaming and everybody, oh Lord, my baby. It ain't happening. Go ahead and read. For the, for the anointing oil of the Lord for is the upon anointing you. anointing oil of the Lord is what? Upon you. So the Lord has sanctified them. The job, the duty, the task is on Aaron's sons. They got a work to do. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. Go ahead and read, brother. And they did according to the word of Moses. Uh-huh. Now, skip down to verse 12 and go ahead. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, uh -huh. and unto Ithamar, his sons, uh -huh. that were left. Take the meat offering that remain of the offerings of the Lord, made by fire, uh -huh. and, eat it with un and eat it without leaven beside the altar. Go ahead. For it is most holy. Right, so the priests are supposed to, the remaining sacrifice, they got to eat that without leaven bread, because leaven represents sin. So he said, eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. They are the priests. They're supposed to perform this ritual. Go ahead and read. 
13. Mm -hmm. And ye shall eat it in the holy place. Go ahead. Because it is thy due. Uh -huh. And thy sons do. Of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire. Go ahead. For so I am commanded. That's right. Now, what do you have? Uh, 14. Go and read verse 14 and go ahead. In the way breast and he shoulder shall ye eat in the clean place. Uh -huh. Thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee. Go ahead. For they be thy due. Right. This is a, what you're supposed to do. This is what this is your job as a priest now. For they be thy doing what? And thy sons do. Go ahead. Which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings uh -huh. of the children of Israel. Right. So Moses is waiting for this to get done. He noticed when they're not coming in to the most holy place to do what they were told to do. But skip down to verse 16 and let's see why they didn't do it. Verse 16, go ahead, brother. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin uh -huh. So he waiting on them to do what they were told. Go ahead. And behold, it was burnt. Uh -huh. And he was angry with Eleazar uh -huh. and Edmar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, uh -huh. Wherefore have ye yet have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place? Uh -huh. Seeing it is most holy. Right, so they supposed to eat that sin offering in the holy place, but they haven't done it yet. They have not done it at all. And Moses is asking them, Why haven't you done this? Go ahead and read. And God had given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation. Uh -huh. So they're supposed to do this to bear the sins of the people. To do what? To make atonement for them before the Lord. Uh -huh. So they was going to take this as a sacrifice, eat it and go before the Lord as an atonement for the people. But go ahead and read. Behold, uh -huh. the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Uh -huh. They didn't do their job like they're supposed to. But we're going to get down to why they didn't do it. But go ahead. You should indeed have eaten it in the holy place. Uh huh. You should have indeed have eaten it in the holy place as what? As I commanded. Uh huh. Now let's see what Aaron said. And Aaron said to Moses, Go ahead. Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering. So they offered their sin offering to uh, Moses. Go ahead. What else? And their burnt and offering. Burnt off so we did that. Go ahead and read. Before the Lord. Uh huh. And such things have befallen. But my sons have died. So we did everything we could, but also at the same time, my sons have died before me, man. Go ahead and read. And if I had eaten the sin off, if I had eaten the sin off from what? Today, uh -huh. should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? That's right, because the Lord ain't going to accept your offering if you ain't coming with a pure, a pure heart. Aaron knew that. That's why he said if I would have done this, would have been accepted of the Lord. He wasn't going to accept it knowing that inside I'm grieved. I can't express it. But I'm not coming with a pure heart with this offer. So this is why they didn't do it. But go ahead and read, brother. And when Moses heard that, uh -huh. he was content. Then he understood. Then he understood. Now, let's go a little further. Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians because, you know, on the outside, when you first come into the Word, and we watch some of the elders online teaching the gospel, you know, coming up into the Word, you know, for us, being younger guys in the word, we look at it and that's a, that's a pleasure for us. That's like a, a great thing to, to see the elders picking up and preaching the gospel that was being preached before we even came on the scene. During the time of Jesus when he was on earth. And to know that the Lord is pouring out his spirit on Israel to get back on the job. For us to be numbered among the brethren, to be out and go and preach, it's a great thing. It makes you feel good, but at the same time, sisters and brothers, when you see some of the things that take place preaching this gospel, it ain't always a good thing. It ain't always, you know, physically, you know, it's not always peachy king. Because it's also a bad side. And Paul's going to let you know that. But regardless of the bad side that come with it, it still got to be preached. The Lord knows the bad side that come with it. That's why he came on earth and what they did to him. They killed him. So we understand that, you know, it's a glorious side of preaching the gospel, but it's also a side where, you know, they're going to deliver us up. Also going to be a time when the children get sick. But what we got to do, we still got to go preach the gospel. It's like a catch-22. Ultimately, at the end, we look forward to that glorious reward. But we still got to preach this gospel. But let's go look at some of the things that Paul encountered. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he's talking about how he's jealous over, you know, them at Corinth with a godly jealousy. Seeing that he espoused them to 
a chaste virgin of Christ. But now they starting to listen to other doctrines, and he's saying, I'm jealous of you with godly jealousy, but I, I gave you the word, but now you decide to listen to other people. But don't be deceived. Because Satan, just like he transformed himself into an angel of light, the ministers have transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. But yet still, y'all believe them. But let me just kind of glory myself for a little bit and show you all the things I went through to bring you this gospel. Let's look at it, verse 16. What does it say, brother? I say again, uh -huh. that no man think me a fool. Uh -huh. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me. Go ahead. That I may boast myself a little. So Paul finna kind of go into the things that he did. And all the stuff he went through, you know, to bring this gospel and to, to deliver it to, you know, them at Corinth. Not only Corinth, but even today we can look into the scriptures and see what Paul went through. But also Paul had, he was killing a lot of saints in the church too, so the Lord, you know, poured out his cup of indignation on him. In other words, he had to, he sowed, he reaped what he sowed. But go ahead and read, bro. That which I speak, uh -huh. I speak it not after the Lord, uh -huh. but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Uh -huh. So he just saying, I'm just letting you know what I feel myself. I'm not speaking after the Lord, I'm just telling you how I feel. Because he was upset. You know, I'm preaching to you all, and you guys going to get the word from somebody else? Don't be deceived by them. But go ahead and read. Seeing that many glory after the flesh. Uh -huh. And that's what we're dealing with today. Many glory after the flesh. That's why you have all these churches going to be filled up tomorrow. Only a few of us going to be keeping Day of Atonement. Because they're glorying after the flesh. They're looking at the big cars. They're looking at the big churches. They're looking at the money. They're looking at the so-called preachers of L.A. They're looking at this type of stuff. They're glorying in the flesh. But go ahead and read, bro. I will glory also. Uh -huh. So I'm going I'm to I'm step beside myself for a minute and let you know all the stuff that I went through. Let you know that what I do outweighs what these false prophets do. But skip down to verse 23 and go ahead. Are they ministers of Christ? Uh-huh. I speak as a fool. Go ahead. I am more. Uh-huh. And labor is more abundant. That's right. So the stuff I'm going to is way more abundant than what they're doing. The work that I'm doing is way more abundant than what they're doing. Go ahead. And what else? And stripes uh -huh. above measure. And stripes above measure. Go ahead. And prisons more frequent. Uh-huh. And deaths off. That's right. Often time. Verse 24. What does it say? Of the Jews. You said 24? 24. Go ahead. Sorry. Of the Jews, five times received, I forty stripes, uh, same one. Uh -huh. What else? So he, he was beaten, what else? He received stripes from the Jews. Now, what else? Verse 25. Thrice was I beaten with rods. He got beaten with rods, what else? Once was I stoned. So imagine that. You standing there getting stoned? Like Paul got stoned, sister and brother. He's telling you what he did, what happened to him. What else? Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Uh -huh. So shipwreck three times. And Paul was delivered to prison during some of these voyages on uh, one, I think one of the one might be one or two of the voyages on the ship. He was in bondage. Go ahead and read. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Y'all know what that deep is? It's the water. He said, a night and a day have I been in the deep. And what else? In journeying uh -huh. often. Go ahead. In pearls of water. Go ahead. In pearls of robbers. Uh-huh. And pearls by my own and come in. And, my, and this peril is trouble. He experiencing trouble on every side. But he preaching this gospel. That's why I told you it's a it's a not a downside, it's a bad side. I can't say a downside. But I'm just saying it's some it's some other stuff, you know, it look good. It may look like this is something, you know, that's that's always covered in just preaching the gospel, but people are listening to the word. But we haven't came into that time yet where the Lord has allowed it to start coming at us physically. And this is what we prepare for. And this is why the wives have to be supportive of the husbands, especially preaching the gospel. This is how you're going, this is how you'll help me. Because that brother got to go teach. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Go ahead and read, bro. In perils by the heathen. Uh huh. In perils by the city. Pearls in the wilderness. Go ahead. So everywhere he went, he was in trouble. Things was coming up on Paul. 
Go ahead. In perils in the sea. Uh huh. In perils among false brethren. In perils among what? False brethren. False brethren. They the ones they was getting ready to jump on Paul when they they lied on him and said he brought a Gentile into the tabernacle. I said, one of the time I said, I wanted to tell But they tried to have Paul put on trial, lying on him. Impaired by false brethren. Go ahead and read. In weariness, uh -huh. in painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst? What else? In fasting uh -huh. often. Uh -huh. What else? In cold and naked. In cold and nakedness. Brother, you ready to deal with this? Go ahead and read. And he naming all the things, some of the things he named, but he's going to let you know in this verse right here, some things I left out. Go ahead and read. Besides those things that are without. That's right. Besides those things I, I didn't even mention it. Go ahead. That which come upon me daily. Which come upon me daily. What? The care of all the church. All this is for the word of God. All this is concerning the church, sisters and brothers. That's what this is about. This is what a watchman has to go through. So these little things, these little hiccups we may run into, we still got to preach this gospel. Regardless. Go ahead and read, brother. Who is weak? If anybody went through anything, Paul is telling you who is weak. Can't compare to what I went through. Who is weak and what else? And I am not weak. Uh-huh. And I am not weak? You mean to tell me they go through their stuff, but I, they, they, in other words, what they went through don't compare to what I've been through. Go ahead, brother. Who is offended? Uh-huh. And I burn not. That's right. Now let's go over to Matthew <laughs> chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Let's go look at this young rich ruler. Because see, people, you know, say that they are serving the Lord, say that they are following the Lord, but we really follow the Lord. You know how it's gonna be when it comes time for that, when that great tribulation come on earth. And you know that the Lord got a place set for his saints. But you got to leave all that you have. You got to leave family. You got to leave friends. You got to leave your job. You got to leave your house. <coughs> so let's go see what happened to this young ruler when he came before the Lord. Let's see what he said. Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 16. When you get it, go ahead and read, bro. And behold... One came and said unto him, Good master, go ahead. What good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right, so he didn't say, What good things shall I do that I may get to the heaven? Just learn someone who learn something. He said, What good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So they knew at this time, you know, they knew about living forever, sister and brother. He said, What good thing that I, uh, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What else? Verse 17. And he said unto him, uh -huh. Why callest thou me good? Go ahead. There is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is God. That's but right. If, but if thou wilt enter into life, uh -huh. keep the commandments. So if you go ahead in everlasting life, sister brother, keep the commandments. That means you gotta enter in. You gotta in, that means you don't have it. Yeah, you gotta enter into it at a set time. So he said, if you're gonna enter into life, keep the commandments. What else, brother? He said unto him, uh -huh. which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Uh -huh. So he asked him, he said, which? In other words, which one I supposed to keep? And Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. What else? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's right. So he laid, he laid out some of the commandments before him. So much for we don't got to keep that old law. Right. That's the covenant, mm -hmm. sister, brother. Go ahead and read. Honor thy father and thy mother, uh -huh. and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 20, go ahead. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Uh -huh. What lack I yet? That's right. He said, All these things I've been doing. Where is am I lacking at? But let's see what the Lord said. Verse 21, go ahead. Jesus said unto him, If thou will, if thou will be perfect. Right, so you got everything. You good. But if you're going to be perfect, this is what you need to do. Go ahead. Go and sell that thou hast. Uh-huh. And give to the poor. Go and sell everything. Well, not everything, but go and sell that you have and give to the poor. And what else? And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And you're going to have treasure in heaven to do what? And come and follow me. So at the end of the day, he's saying go do what you got to do. Get rid of your stuff. Sell it and come and follow me. 
What was Jesus doing when he came? He was preaching the gospel. So he let you know, don't let the riches of the world stop you. Go get, go get those up cellos and come on and follow me. Come on, preach this gospel. Go ahead and read. But when the young man heard that saying, uh -huh. he went away sorrowful. So he heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. Why? For he had great possessions. Because he had great possessions, sister, bro. So we're looking at the different instances how the Lord don't want you mourning. The Lord don't want you crying. I mean, not now. He, that, those certain instances were for those certain people at that time. Unless the Lord come down and tell you something differently. You know, we still cry, we still mourn and stuff like that. But I'm just showing you today, you know, the Lord's business is what's more important. It still got to be done. You still got to keep walking this walk. You still have to realize that you are ministering to people. They are watching how you carry yourself. They're watching to see if you're going to gonna come off of them commandments. They're watching to see if you're going to get into a situation, you know what I'm saying, to see if you're just going to go back to into the Sunday church. I just can't do that no more. That was, it was too stressful for me. Trying to, you know, deal with what's going on in, in my house, all the persecution that's coming from my friends and stuff, the sickness that I may be dealing with, losing my job and all that type of stuff, and then serving this God of this Bible on top of all this stuff, I just can't do it. So I'm going to just go back to the world so I can be comforted. But you can't have that mindset. You got to stay in the Word of God. Because at the end, like I keep telling you, we're looking forward to that glory that comes after coming of the Lord. Verse 23, what does it say, bro? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. A rich man <laughs> hardly going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because those riches are more important than doing what the Lord said. They won't read this in the church as well. <laughs> this is not hard, a hard scripture. It's not a hard chapter. It's a simple, it's a simple little pair, it's a simple situation that took place that Joel Osteen can say very nice to his people at the church. Creflo Dollar can say it really nice. All he got to do is read it. But they won't read this. Because they have began to worship their riches. But he was letting you know when he told this guy, if you're going to be perfect, go and sell that you have and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Our treasure is in heaven right now. We know that when the Lord returns, he comes with that treasure. He comes with that glorified body, the everlasting one. And he said, and come and follow me. Now, let's go over to John chapter 1. I mean, Jonah. If we're going to look at somebody who tried to get out of the job, the Lord told him specifically what he was supposed to do. And he tried to escape his job. And that's what is kind of going on with Israel today. We'll look at later on. You know, Israel wake up and feel like we understand that we're the chosen people, but we're not really understanding that we're chosen to preach the gospel. So we get up and just start bashing on the white men. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Israel is chosen to do a job. And that job is to preach the gospel. Because on the table is souls, people, humans. Man is on the table here. And the Lord loves his creation. But in order to save some of those in his creation, the priest got to preach the gospel. But just like Jonah tried to flee from it, this is what Israel tried to do. And we're going to look at that in the parable also. But now, let's go look at uh, Jonah chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. You get it, brother. Go ahead and read. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amatai, uh -huh. saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Uh -huh. So he, he was told to go to Nineveh and preach against this city. And that's what the job of the priest is. You go and preach against the wickedness. You go and, 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 tell, and warn them from the Lord. Go ahead and read, brother. For their wickedness is come up before me. Uh huh. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish. So that's just like man. They, he, he tried to run and go his opposite way. 
Go away from doing what the Lord said. Go ahead. From the presence of the Lord. Uh huh. And went down to Joppa. Go ahead. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof uh -huh. and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish uh -huh. from the presence of the Lord. So he, he, he think, that's man, man think they didn't hide from the Lord. The Lord got eyes all over this place. And he see exactly what you're doing. He know exactly where you at. He know if you're trying to be half-hearted and serving him, or if you're whole-hearted and serving him. There's nothing you can hide from the Lord. Go ahead and read, bro. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the into the sea. Uh huh. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. Go ahead. So that the ship was like to be broken. That's right. So the Lord sent that wind through that, and the ship was almost breaking up. So that's gonna scare the men on the ship. So they wondering what's going on. So they're running through the ship, panicking now. They see, uh, you know, Jonah's in the bottom of the ship, sleeping. They gonna wake him up. Tell him to cry out to your God and ask us what's going on. So they decided to cast lots to see where this was coming from. And these lots fell on Jonah. So pick it up to verse 9 and let's see what went on. Go ahead. And he said unto them, uh -huh. I am in Hebrew. Go ahead. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, uh -huh. which have made the sea and the dry land. Go ahead. Then were the men exceeding afraid. Go ahead. And said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, uh -huh. because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall you do unto thee? What shall we do unto thee? Go ahead. That the sea may be calm unto us. Right, so what, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm? Go ahead. For the sea wrought, uh -huh. it was tempestuous. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Take me up. And cast me forth into the sea. Uh -huh. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For well, I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon me. That's right. So they tried to row and get the boat to the land, but the, the sea was too tempestuous. So they was asking the Lord, Lord, don't let this guy sin come on us. Because of what he did. Don't let us have to die for this guy. So they went on and threw him into the sea. Verse 15, go ahead. So they took up Jonah uh -huh. and cast him forth into the sea. Go ahead. And the sea ceased from her, her rage. That's right, because the Lord had a problem with Jonah, not the man on the ship. That's just like today. The Lord got the problem with Israel, not the Gentile. See, the Lord will show you small things, just pay attention. He said, I am a Hebrew. And he was told to go preach that gospel to Nineveh. He tried to get on that ship to get out of it, the Lord dealt with it. As soon as he got in that seat, everything stopped with them guys on there. Because the Lord ain't got a controversy with the nations as far as them not doing their job in regard to preaching the gospel. He got a controversy with Israel not preaching the gospel. This is why we in captivity. This is why we got scattered throughout all four corners of the earth. This is why we filling up the prison house. This is why we getting shot down like dogs. Because the Lord got a controversy with Israel for not doing what he said. We're responsible for the whole creation system, brother. We're responsible, responsible for sisters and brothers and people of this world turning back to the Most High God. So you don't want to do what I say, I'm going to cause trouble to come upon. So we're seeing that Jonah tried to escape from teaching the gospel. And the Lord just let, let, let us know that you can't hide from it. You're going to do what I tell you to do. Now, verse 15, uh, 16, and go ahead. Then the man feared the Lord exceedingly, uh -huh. and offered and sacrificed unto the Lord, uh -huh. and made vows. Go ahead. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Uh -huh. and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Right. So now, when they threw him over, the Lord already had a already had a well set to swallow up Jonah. Cause inside this well, he finna he finna start. He gonna cry out to the Lord, and you know he gonna change his his outlook on things. But the, the, the mission that he was sent out to do ain't going to change, sister and brother. You still got to complete the mission. And that's to preach the gospel. So go right on into chapter 2 and verse 1. What does it say, brother? Then John prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Go ahead. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. Uh huh. And he heard me. Go ahead. Out of the belly of hell cried I. Uh huh. And thou heardest my voice. That's right. So that's letting you know hell is also a condition. The lake of fire, where they 
the world is looking for when they say somebody died and went to hell, you know, they talking about the lake of fire. That does not exist at this point. But we also know that hell is a condition. This is why Jonah is letting you know, out of the belly of hell cried I and I heard my voice. Verse 3, go ahead. But thou hast cast me into the deep. Uh -huh. So thou hast cast me into the deep, into the water. Didn't we see that earlier? Thou has cast me into the deep, go ahead, in the midst of the seas, uh -huh. and the floods compassed me about. Go ahead. All thy billows and all thy waves passed over me. Uh -huh. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. That's right, go ahead. Yet I will look again toward the holy, toward thy holy temple. And that's what's happening right now today. The Lord cast him out of his sight, and now we start to look back toward his holy temple. Now we start to look back to his law, statutes, and commandments. But this was taking place on a, you know, a small scale to kind of give us an example of how the Lord don't change. If he put out, you know, a mission for you to do something, you still got to do it. And you're going to find out today that Israel was told some was given a job when they came into the wilderness. The Lord told them they got a job to do. Israel tried to get out of the job. The Lord cast them out. Then the Lord going to pour his spirit back on them. And guess what? They got to get right back on the same job. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 5. Uh-huh. The waters come past me about, even to the soul. Go ahead. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Uh-huh. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. Go ahead. The earth with her bare with her bars was about me forever. Uh-huh. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. Go ahead. So he didn't allow him to die. That's thank you, bro. Wow. That's why the Lord said that he didn't allow his soul to see corruption when he was in the earth three days and three nights, remember? And he said he didn't allow me to see corruption. But what did Jonah just say? He said, that is, thou has uh, brought up my life from corruption. In other words, the Lord didn't allow him to die. He brought him up. But that's why, what did Jesus say in, when he said, when they asked him to show him a sign? He said, a sign that I'm going to give you that I'll be in the heart of the earth like Jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. And Jonah came up out of that well. And Jesus came up out of the earth. He didn't see corruption. Go ahead and read, bro. Oh Lord, my God. Uh huh. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. Go ahead. And my prayer, and my prayer came in unto thee. Uh huh. Into thy holy temple. That's right. Go ahead. They that observe lying vanities uh -huh. forsake their own mercy. That's right. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. And the mercy is that the Lord is giving you a chance to take on this everlasting life and get out from under this death sentence. But if you observe lying vanity, you do away with that mercy that the Lord is allowing you to receive. If you're not studying and showing yourself approved, you're doing away with that mercy that the Lord is allowing you to receive. If you still want to take on man's tradition, the man's holiday, you're doing away with that mercy that the Lord is allowed to be given to me. So he say, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. We're looking in the Old Testament, we're still looking at deceit, but in a different form. Be not deceived. Many going to come in my name saying I am Christ. So Jonah is even telling you, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Verse 9, go ahead. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Uh huh. Go ahead. I will pay that that I will pay that that I have vowed. Uh huh. Salvation is of the Lord. And what took place? And the Lord spake unto the fish and vomited out Jonah. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Uh -huh. Now go into chapter three and pick it up at verse three. Go ahead. But let's see what happened when Jonah came out of the belly of the whale. Go ahead. So Jonah arose uh -huh. and went into Nineveh Go ahead. according to the word of the Lord. He did what? Went into Nineveh. Oh, so now he went to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. So he had to go through all that, try to disobey what the Lord said. The Lord almost killed him in the well. He didn't allow him to see corruption, though. He didn't allow him to die. Okay? He spit him out. And then what did he do? He went on to Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord. In other words, his mission wasn't changed just because you try to be disobedient. You still going to get up and go preach. That's why, sisters and brothers, when you walk in this walk and you happen to stumble in the word of God, 
That don't mean you just give up and say, okay, well, I'm done. You know, my plot is a lake of fire now. I done messed up. That's, don't do that, sister, bro. We see somebody, Jonah, was outright disobedient. The Lord took him through all that could have took his life for being disobedient. You seen what he did to Aaron's son. They offered sacrifice of uh, strange fire, and the Lord killed him. So what did, they, what did Jonah do? He had to still go preach the gospel. All you did was delay, delay what you had to do anyway. So don't allow Satan to convince you and say, well, uh, you done messed up. You know, you out of the, you out of the fold. Now you go before the Lord and you cry out to the Lord. The Lord gonna have mercy on who he gonna have mercy on. And then you get up and you get back on the job. Cause at the end of the day, sisters and brother, you know, if it comes to the point you don't make the first resurrection, you have to stand before the Lord in the second resurrection, you're good. You know, you're gonna be judged according to your works. So your works may outweigh the mistakes that you make. Not giving you no past the sin. I'm just letting you know, don't sit up there and lay in the dog on mud and mur and, and wallow, wallow around in it because you mess up. Get up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get better. Please help me in this area, Lord. And stay in the Word of God. Don't just turn back. But you see what Jonah did. Jonah had went against the Lord and tried to be disobedient. Lord put him inside that well. Well spit him out after he prayed to the Lord. Notice what Jonah did now. Jonah prayed to the Lord and let him know I was wrong for what I did in so many words. Jonah didn't get inside the bell of the well and say, oh Lord, I'm a, I, I can't do it no more. I'm, I'm, it's over with for me. He got inside that well. He started praying to the Lord that well spit him up and what took place? Lord spit him out and then he went and preached the gospel to Nineveh. Because preaching this gospel is important because souls are on the line. So we're going to read that. Where you at, brother? At the bottom of verse 3. Go ahead and finish that. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Uh -huh. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. Go ahead. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Right, so this is what's happening. Now he's going into Nineveh to cry out to the city. And letting them know 40 days this city is going to be overthrown. But the Lord used him as the messenger, as the priest or the one to go as the watchman and warn them. Go ahead and read, brother. So the people of Nineveh believed God. So what did the people of Nineveh do? Believe God. How did they believe God? Because the Lord sent a messenger, messenger to do a job. So they believe God and what? And proclaim the fast. Uh-huh. And put on sackcloth. Go ahead. From the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Go ahead and read. For word came unto the king of Nineveh. Uh-huh. And he arose from his throne. Mm -hmm. And he laid his robe from him. Go ahead. And covered him with sackcloth uh -huh. and sat in ash. So now he mourned. Now he humbling himself. The king of Nineveh is. Go ahead and read, brother. And he caused it to be proclaimed uh -huh. and published through Nineveh Go ahead. by the decree of the king and his noble, Go ahead. saying, Let neither man nor beast, uh -huh. herd nor flock, taste anything. They finna do what? Finish reading that. Let them not feed uh -huh. nor drink water. So he making the whole city go on a fast. But how is the whole city going to go on a fast? Because the messenger went and warned them of what the Lord was getting ready to do. That's why the job of the priest is so important regardless of what we may be experiencing. Because you got to warn the people what the Lord is getting ready to do on this earth. Sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth uh -huh. and cry mightily unto God. Go ahead. Yeah. Let them turn every one from his evil way. So this is what this is the mindset of the people of the king and the people in Nineveh now. Let every man turn from his evil way and from what? And from the violence that is in their hands. Uh-huh. Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? So if we decide to do what the Lord say, how do we not know that the Lord may just repent? How do we not know that the Lord may just bring it off of us? But in order for this to happen, the messenger had to go preach the gospel. Even though he didn't want to, the Lord whooped him up and he still had to get on the job. That's how important this job of the priest is. Regardless of what we still got to preach. Because the Lord don't want any man to perish. And call all to everlasting. Would that uh, not any man should perish, but call every man to everlasting life. Go ahead and read and turn away from his fierce anger. Uh-huh. So who can tell if God will turn 
and repent and turn away from his fear, fierce anger that what? That we perish not. Uh huh. And God saw their works. Go ahead. That they turned from their evil. So way. they turned from their evil way. And what else? God repented of the evil. And God repented of the evil. Go ahead and read, brother. That he has said that he would do unto them. Uh, Y'all see that? That's why it's so important for, regardless of what's going on, even if you may have different things going on in your house, in your life, in your family, different things you may be going through, you still got to be mindful of the witness that you are of Jesus. And then the brothers who got to teach the word, you still got to be mindful that you still got to preach this gospel. It still got to go. It, the only way it's going to go out, sister, it's going to go through Israel, the priest. The Lord understands everything that's going on inside your household. He understands the afflictions that come on this body. But he ain't going to put more on you than you can bear, sister, bro. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew chapter 20, we're wrapping up. We got four more places to go. Matthew chapter 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. When well, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an household, uh -huh. which went out in the earth and which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. That's right. Go ahead. So the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is a householder. He went out early in the morning to hire laborers into the vineyard. The laborers will be the one that's preaching the gospel. The vineyard will be the people. Go ahead and read, bro. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, right. Go ahead. he sent them into his vineyard. That's right. So he agreed with these laborers for a penny a day. Then he sent them into the vineyard. Because keep in mind now, the agreement is made between two people. But in this instance, we're agreeing to everlasting life. To go out and teach the gospel. Go ahead and read. And he went out about the third hour uh -huh. and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. That's right. So he went out around 9 o'clock that day. And he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and whatever. And said unto them, uh -huh. Go ye also into the vineyard. Uh -huh. And whatsoever is right, go ahead. I will give you. That's right. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. And they went their way. All right. So, and this is how the Lord is still doing with the vineyard system, bro. You had, you know, people of old that was hired to do a work into the vineyard. Moses was a prophet. They had to go into the vineyard. Ezekiel. James, Zechariah, Elias, Elijah, John the Baptist, Jesus even came. But he let you know in his peril. You had the disciples. And now, today, you have us that the Lord is calling into the vineyard. We'll be the ones at the end that's coming in at the end of the day now. The 11th hour. Go ahead and read. Again, he went out about the uh -huh. sixth and ninth hour uh -huh. and did likewise. Go ahead. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle uh -huh. and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Uh -huh. And they answered him saying, Ain't nobody gave us no work. So the Lord, in this parable, they got hired and he told him, Now y'all going out to the vineyard and y'all working. This is in the eleventh hour. We'll pick it up at verse 9 and go ahead. And when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, uh -huh. they received every man a penny. That's right, because when the 12th hour came, now it was time for payment. And he said they're going to pay them according to the last all the way up to the first. So the ones who was hired last going to get paid, then all the way down to the first, they're going to get paid. So now I said when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received, received every man a penny. Go ahead, verse 10. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. Uh-huh. And they likewise received every man in pink. That's right, because see, the agreement for us, sisters and brothers, is, that is everlasting life. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be no, you know, somebody else get a better reward than us. We all shooting for the kingdom. But the Lord is likening this kingdom to this parable. They all agree for a penny. Like we all agree to do this to receive what? Everlasting life. Go ahead and read, brother. But you got some of these brothers that's been out here a little bit longer feeling like they should get a better reward. But the Lord going to mention that in this parable. Go ahead and read. 
And when they had received it, uh -huh. they murmured against the good men of the house. So they're not murmuring against the worker, they're murmuring against the good man of the house. They talking against him. Go ahead and read, brother. Saying, uh -huh. these lads have wrought but one hour. They're right, they're only working but one hour. Go ahead. And thou hast made them equal unto us, uh -huh. which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Right. We've been working all this time. That's kind of like, you know, say when we call Brother George, myself, Brother Demarcus, other brothers into the Word of God. And over the next 10 years, we're preaching the gospel. And the Lord come back 15 years later, and in that last two years, he called some brothers in to start teaching. And then we murmur against the Lord. We've been preaching for the last 10, 15 years. How they get, how they get the same reward we get, and they've only been preaching two years. That's what he's saying. Go ahead and read, bro. 13. Uh-huh. But he answered one of them and said, Go ahead. Friend, I do thee no wrong. Uh-huh. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? That's right. Didn't we all agree to everlasting life? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we exchanged in the covenant? I didn't exchange and say, well, I need to get more than Brother DeMarcus. We all agreed to everlasting life once we came under the covenant. So he says here, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Did thou not agree with me for a penny? Go ahead and read, brother. Take that thine is uh -huh. and go thy way. Go ahead. I will give unto this last, uh -huh. even as unto thee. That's right. So y'all all gonna get the same thing. That's why you gotta be mindful of how you treat people who are not in the Word of God. Because you never know. The Lord even tell you all the way down to the end, when we get into the day of the Lord, he said, your sons and daughters going to prophesy. Your young men going to dream dreams. Those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's at the day of the Lord, sister, bro. So we got enough to be worried about in our own household than to be worried about when the Lord decides to put the Holy Spirit out on somebody, whether he's been teaching 10, 15, 20 years, or two years. Just thank the Lord that the Lord is bringing people in to help us preach this gospel. Go ahead and read, bro. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Uh-huh. Is not I evil? Uh-huh. Because I am good? Uh-huh. So he said, is your I evil because I'm good? And yeah, that I was evil. That's why they was complaining and murmuring against the Lord. Verse 16, what did the Lord say? So the last shall be first. So the last going to be first. Go ahead. And the first last. I am the first last and what up? For many be called, uh -huh. but few chosen. That's right. So now, let's go over to Matthew chapter 25. Because this is what we're looking for. You know, when we are mindful of what, what's going on when we're preaching this gospel. This is what we got to keep in mind. These are the words that you want to hear, sister and brother. But we're going to look at another parable. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to... Pick it up at verse 14. When you get it, go ahead and read, bro. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling as a man. Is as a man traveling into a far country. Uh-huh. Who called his own servants. Go ahead. And delivered unto them his goods. Uh-huh. So the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Who called his own servants. Listen now, he called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. His own servants would be Israel. What did he give Israel? He gave Israel the word. That's why I said, all families of the earth, only you have I known. Therefore I will punish you for your iniquities. Go ahead and read, brother. And unto one he gave five talents, uh -huh. to another two, Go ahead. And, to a, and to another one. Uh -huh. To every man according to his seven, according to his several ability uh -huh. and straightway took his journey that's right go ahead then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same that's right so he took this knowledge that the Lord gave him he went and traded this knowledge go ahead and read and made them other five talents uh -huh. and he brought in more five talents on top of what he had go ahead and read bro and likewise he that had received two uh -huh. he also gained other two that's right go ahead but he that had received one went and digged in the earth uh -huh. and hid his Lord's money. So he went and hid the Lord's money. This is the knowledge that the Lord gave him. You're supposed to go spread this gospel. You're supposed to go tell people about the goodness of the Most High God. 
and bring them in. So he went and hid his Lord's money. And what else? Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord, after a long time, the Lord of those servants come and reckoned with one. Uh, reckoned with them. That's right. So he came to deal, deal with them. Go ahead. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, uh -huh. Go ahead. Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Uh -huh. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents uh -huh. more. That's right. So the Lord gave him five talents. When the Lord returned to reckon with him, or this, he tell the Lord, he said, hey, you gave me five and I have gained five more talents. But this is what you're looking for. This is what you're trying to hear, sister. Bro. Go ahead and read. His Lord said unto him, uh -huh. well done. Well done. That implies that you got to do something, right? He said, well done. Go ahead, brother. Thou good and faithful servant. Thou good and faithful servant. That means that you are consistent with this word of God. You're constantly being an example for the Lord. Constantly watching how you carry yourself. Constantly making sure that you be a minister of the gospel to the world. Like I told you, through you, this is how the glory of the Lord is being, it's, it's being shown through us. Go ahead, brother. So he said, well done, not good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over, over a few things. Go ahead. I will make thee ruler over many things. Uh-huh. Enter thou into the joy of, of thy Lord. That's right. Go ahead. He also that had received two talents came and said, uh -huh. Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Go ahead. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Uh-huh. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. That's right. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to hear at the end. When all this is said and done, this is what you want to hear from the Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. Go ahead. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Uh huh. I will make thee ruler over many things. Go ahead. Enter thou into the out. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Go ahead and read. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, uh -huh. Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, <laughs> reaping where thou hast not sown. Right. So notice what he said. I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown. When the angels get back, they gonna do what? They gonna reap. They gathering up the people set for the kingdom. Then they also gathering, you know, the ones that are set for the lake of fire. But he said, I, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou has not sown. The Lord has given the word to Israel, sisters and brothers. But he said, I know you reaping where you have not sown. How you gonna reap where you, where you haven't sown it? He's going to reap where he hasn't sown because we're going to give it to the ones that he hasn't given to. We're going to take this gospel and spread it throughout the world. Go ahead and read, bro. And gather where thou hast not straw. And that's why he say, blessed is the man that take hold of my Sabbath. You read down in verse 8, Isaiah 50, 50, uh, 56 and 8, he said, I'm going to gather others that are not of, uh, well, let me look at that. Hold on one second. Just so y'all can understand. Isaiah 56, and I'm going to just look at it. Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 8. It says, The Lord which gathered the outcasts of Israel saith what? Yet I will gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. But how is he going to do that? Because the ones that he given these talents to, they're going to go out and spread this gospel to all the sons of Adam, sisters and brothers. So in this parable here, this young man, or this guy who had the one talent, he received one talent, came and said, Lord, Lord, I knew thee, that thou art a hard man, reaping what thou hast not sown, and gathering what thou hast not straw. So you're going to gather where you haven't even put the word in. So let's see what the Lord said. Go ahead and read. And I was afraid. And I was afraid of what? And went and hid thy talent in the earth. So what I did with the knowledge you gave me, I just kept it to myself. Well, I kept it among Israel. That's like some of these brothers today. Only thinking that salvation is for Israel. But go ahead and read. Lo, uh -huh. there thou hast that is not. Right, so here you go. What you left me with, I got it here. Go and take it, Lord. But let's see what the Lord said. Go ahead and read, brother. The Lord answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Thou wicked and slothful servant. That's right, go ahead. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow you not. You knew I reap where I sow not. Go ahead and read, brother. Gather where I have not strong. Uh-huh. 
Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to ex exchange. That's right. You should have put my money to the exchanges and what? And then at my coming, uh -huh. I should have received my own with users. That's right. So when I got back, I was going to receive my own Israel and usury. In other words, interest. But I'm going to get more on top of what? On top of Israel. In other words, I'm going to also bring in other nations. I should have received my own with usury. My own with interest. With more on top of what I gave you all. Go ahead and read, bro. Take therefore the talent from him, uh -huh. and give it unto him which have ten talents. That's right, go ahead. For unto everyone that have shall be given. For unto everyone that have shall be given. Go ahead. And he shall have abundance. Go ahead. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. Uh huh. So from him that have not shall be taken away even. So even that one you got, I'm going to take that from you. Go ahead and read. And cast ye. The unprofitable servant uh -huh. to our out of dark. So you gotta preach the gospel and you gotta make sure you doing the work. This is why when we got back from out of town, I said I gotta get down to Jacksonville to baptize his brother because you know I'm trying to get the work under my belt. You know, I want the Lord when he returned, I want him to say, Well done, that good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom of the Lord. So he say here, cast ye the unprofitable, that wicked and slothful servant. Into where? Out of darkness. That's the lake of fire. It's going to be what? There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh huh. That's it on that? Yes, sir. All right, now let's go over to Exodus chapter 19. Let's see when this job was given to this people. This, this people of Israel when they came out of the wilderness, sisters and brothers. But see, also understand, I always remember that when Israel came into the wilderness, there was a great multitude among these people. And the Lord already had the order set up. You had Israel, you had the stranger among Israel. So the Lord made reference to Israel and the stranger that was among Israel. They were supposed to do the same thing we were supposed to do. They're going to be a light to the nations also because they're coming up under Israel, the commonwealth of Israel. However, keep in mind, if Israel fell off the job, then the Lord was going to punish Israel and bring that stranger up above you. And that's where we're at today. Stranger has came up above us and we have been brought down very low because of our disobedience. So Exodus chapter 19 and verse 1. You can get to go ahead and read, brother. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Uh -huh. Go ahead. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai uh -huh. and had pits in the wilderness. And there Israel camp. Hold on one second. You want to stop with all that noise? Go ahead and read. And there Israel camp before the mount. Uh-huh. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain. Go ahead. Saying, Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob. Uh-huh. Tell the children of Israel. Go ahead. So now go tell the children of Israel what? Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Uh-huh. And how I bear you on eagles' wings. Go ahead. And brought you unto myself. That's right. You witnessed how I brought you out there. You witnessed the plagues in the land of Egypt. The plagues in the land of, land of Egypt. You witnessed me opening up that Red Sea and brought you unto myself. You seen all of that. Go ahead and read. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice and deed. So if you obey my voice and deed, and what? And keep my covenant. Go ahead. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Go ahead. For all the earth is mine. Right, so, you know, he doesn't want to be a special people, a peculiar treasure, but it's something else that come with it. And that's where, you know, that's where we at right now because we wake up and tell people we're the, we're the people of the Bible and stuff like that, but it's something, there's an other end to that. There's another end to that stick. There's another end to you being a peculiar, you know, and a peculiar treasure uh, to the Lord above all people on the earth. What's the other end of that? Verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. He shall be to me a what? A kingdom of priests. So this is a part of you keeping that covenant. Now the Lord ain't asking you to do something. He telling you keep my covenant, you're going to preach this gospel. You're going to be a kingdom of priests. If you're a kingdom of priests, like I always say, it don't make sense for a priest to preach to another priest. The priest is supposed to uh, 
bring the gospel to the ones who are uninformed, who don't have understanding of the word. That's what the priest does. The priest is the teacher. He has understanding or he is enlightened on the word of God. So he's going to preach it to the one who does not have understanding, who is not enlightened on the word of God. So if Israel is a kingdom of priests, then that means we're supposed to be preaching to the other kingdoms, other, other, other nations. So where we at? Go ahead. And in the holy nation. And a holy nation, a sanctified nation. Uh-huh. So remember that. He said a holy nation now. How are we holy? Because through Israel, the Lord is going to be sanctified. This is how the world is going to know of this true and living God. Go ahead and read, brother. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. He didn't say to the children of Esau. He didn't say to the children of Japheth. He said to the children of Israel. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go over to Ezekiel chapter 36. And we got one place after this. I might throw one scripture. Ezekiel chapter 36. Because we understand that according to what the Lord had said regarding if you keep his covenant, you're going to be a kingdom of priests. So now we're looking at the time where we're going to look at Ezekiel where Israel didn't keep the Lord's covenant. So the Lord scattered his people in the captivity. But the Lord going to call them back. And when he called them back, let's look at the conditions. Or let's look at the method of operation or the mission and see if there's any difference. Ezekiel chapter 36, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead and read, brother. Moreover, mm -hmm. the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Go ahead. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwell in their own land, uh -huh. they defiled it by their own way. Go ahead. And by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanliness of a removed woman. That's right, because the uncleanness of a removed woman, that's a woman that's on her, uh, what is it, what is it menstrual cycle? And then they, the Lord had her separated outside the camp for seven days during the time of her uncleanness. So the Lord is likening Israel, you know, by serving other gods or defiling themselves as a woman that's being removed from the camp. Go ahead and read. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land uh -huh. and for their idols wherewith they had polluted. That's right. And that's still what's going on today. We're still serving these other items. And the Lord is still watching and paying attention to what's going on down here. Verse 19. And I scattered them among the heathen. And he did what? And I scattered them among the heathen. So he got Israel out of the land. He scattered them among the heathen. He told you, you're going to be a holy people unto me. A peculiar treasure unto me. And all this stuff was going to take place in the promised land, sisters and brothers. But what happened, Israel went, you know, got nasty and started doing things against the Lord. So the Lord said, I scattered them among the heathen. He got them out of the land. That's a holy land. So if you're not going to do it, okay, other people get it. But when I get back, he's still going to clean that land out. And that kingdom's still going to be set up on earth. And the law going to go forth from Zion or Jerusalem. Go ahead and read, brother. And they were dispersed through the country. Uh-huh. According to their way, uh -huh. according to their doings, I judged them. That's right. So they was dispersed among the countries according to their doings and their way. Not according to the Lord just waking up one morning and say, well, you know, I just want to send them in the, I mean, in the captivity. According to them breaking my law, statutes, and commandments, according to their ways where they scattered in the captivity. Verse 20, go ahead. And when they answered unto the heathen, uh -huh. whether they went, go ahead. They profane my holy name. That's right, because this is how the Lord is going to be sanctified through Israel, through the priest nation. So he said, when they went, whether they went, when they went to the heathen, they profaned my holy name. When they did what? Said to when, them. When they said, when they to, said them, to them, uh-huh. These are the people of the Lord. Uh-huh. And are gone forth out of his hand, and, out of his land. That's right. And, and keep in mind, for the most part, most of the world understands. They may not admit it, but the people in the higher ups, they know who Israel is, sister. That's why you see here said these are they said these are the people of the Lord. They said the same thing today. I can take you to Psalm 83 and verse 12. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So the world ain't ignorant, sister, bro. But we have profaned the name of the Lord. So the Lord has sent us into captivity. And now the people of the nation say to them, 
These are the people of the Lord and are going forth out of his land. Verse 21, go ahead. But I had pity for my holy name, uh -huh. which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen. Go ahead. So I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen. Go ahead. Whither they went. Uh huh. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God, uh -huh. I do not this, I do not this for your sake. Right, so I'll do this for your sake. Okay? Go ahead and read. O house of Israel, I do this. But for my holy name's sake. I'm doing this for my name's sake, okay? This is why I'm going to do this. Go ahead. Which ye have profaned among the heathen. Now, what are you going to do? Whither ye went. Uh huh. And I will sanctify my great name. Go ahead. Which was profaned among the heathen. Uh huh. Which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Go ahead. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. So how they gonna know that He is the Lord? Keep reading. Saith the Lord Go God. Uh huh. When I shall be sanctified, when I shall you. be what? Sanctified in and you. Who? In you. Finish that. Before their eyes. That's right. So Israel ain't getting off the job system, brother. Now this is why the Lord. Has Israel getting up and getting that you're going to be a holy people, a peculiar church unto me. And what else? A kingdom of priests. So since you want to be disobedient and go against my law, statutes, and commandments, I'm going to scatter you among the heathen. But you also profane my name. But my name is going to be holy among the nations through you. I'm going to be sanctified in you. How is it going to be sanctified in you? Because I'm going to pour my spirit on you. You're going to get up and you're going to start preaching this gospel. And you're going to tell the world about me. Go ahead and read, bro. 24. Uh-huh. For I will take you from among the heathen. Go ahead. And gather you out of all countries. Uh-huh. And will bring you into your own land. That's right. Go ahead. Skip down to verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. Uh-huh. He's going to put his word in you. That's his word. He's going to take the word of the nations out of his people. He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you. And once he put his spirit inside his people, what's going to happen? Cause you to walk in my statutes. Cause you to walk in what? In my statutes. This is why we're keeping the Sabbath day. Go ahead. And ye shall keep my judgment. And you're going to keep my judgment. This is why we obey the dietary law. What else? And do them. And do them. Read on, brother. That's it on that? Yeah. yeah I keep reading. So he said, then when I sprinkle water upon you, I mean 27, I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And that's what started to happen now. He's pouring out the spirit. And people starting to wake up, but he also gonna pour it out massive when he get ready to return. But now you're starting to see his spirit being poured out. Now, this is why we're here keeping the Lord's Sabbath day. This is why we're getting ready to go into the day of Pentecost this evening. Then we're going into, I'm sorry, you know, atonement. That's that's why we had a saint. Because y'all on the job. Praise the Lord. The day of atonement this evening. Then after that, we're going into the tabernacle. Because the Lord said, I'm going to pour my spirit on you, and you're going to start keeping my statutes and my judgment. That's what it was based on. He said, if you keep my covenant, you're going to be a peculiar treasure unto me, and you're going to be a kingdom of priests. So they go hand in hand. You're going to be a kingdom of priests, and you're going to keep my covenant. Now since you done went off and tried to do it your own way, I'm going to put my spirit back inside of you. You're going to start keeping my covenant. And what you're going to do? You're going to start preaching this gospel. That's the importance of the priest, the priest, the word of God system, brother. Now let's go over to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. This one I'm going to add right quick and then we're going to hit the last place after this. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let me get to go ahead and read, brother. I charge thee therefore before God uh -huh. and the Lord Jesus Christ, go ahead, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That's right, go ahead. Preach the word, he said. Preach the, preach the word, go ahead. Be instant in season, be instant in season, regardless of you know what's going on, you still got to preach this word. Be instant in season because it is important that this word gets out, sister and brother. So they say be instant in season. What else? Out of season. Out of season. So regardless, it covers every arena. Preach this word. Go ahead and read, brother. Reprove. Uh-huh. Rebuke. Go ahead. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Exhort with what? All long suffering and what? Doctrine. Doctrine. 
God's doctrine, which is the word of God. What else? Well, the time will come. So this is why we got to preach this doctrine. This is why we got to preach this gospel. For the time will come what? When they will not endure sound doctrine. That's right. So if the priest don't get on the job and preach the gospel, then the whole world going to be lost. So this is why Paul is telling them, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And we are in that time right now, sisters and brothers. So they're not enduring sound doctrine, but the Lord has also opened up the understanding for us to understand what we got to preach. This doctrine. Go ahead and finish that, brother. But after their own lust, uh -huh. shall they heap to themselves. Go ahead. Teachers having itching ears. That's right. They just gather into themselves teachers, and they have them itching ears, and them preachers are scratching their ears, telling them what it is they want to hear. But what is our job? We got to be instant, in season, reprove, uh, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine which is the word of God. And that's the battle that we fight against. That's why, you know, even though we face different adversities, we still got to be about the Lord's business. Because there's a battle going on here. Satan is trying to take out as many people as possible. And how is he going to war with these uh, people that don't have understanding? He's using man. And what is the Lord using? The Lord used man also. So just like Satan got his, his minions on the job, the Lord got his saints on the job. So we understand that in the different things that we face, that the Lord going to take care of the house and we're going to read them. He's going to take care of, you know, the things that we may be worrying about, the things that we stress out about. Just be about the Lord's business. Now, let's go over to uh, the last place, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse... 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 24. When you get it, brother, go ahead. And... No man can serve two masters. Uh huh. For either he will hate he will hate one and love the other, mm -hmm. or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. That's right. That's kind of like what we what we read earlier. You know. The man and already put his hand to the plow, and he kept looking back. He's not fit for the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? Look, think about the, 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 the thing that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah time. The lost wife. The Lord set up a way for them to be delivered. But she kept looking back, and the Lord went on to turn into a pillar of salt. So likewise, the Lord set up a way for you to be delivered out of this. All you got to do is keep his law, statutes, and commandments. To be an example, but if you keep looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. So you ain't gonna serve two masters. For either you're gonna hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in man. Verse 25, go ahead. Therefore I say unto you, uh-huh, take no thought for your life. Uh-huh. What ye shall eat. And this is what the Lord is saying to the disciples, sisters, brother. When they was going out to preach the gospel, he telling them because the saints going to take care of them. That's why tithing and offering is so important. That's why I thank the Lord that, you know, all the different things that the brothers are doing now, going around the world teaching the gospel, the saints are mainly covering that system. Bro. But the Lord know what he's doing. The stuff being broadcast on the internet, the different feast days that are, that are coming up, you know what I'm saying, all the different feast days that Israel has to do, all this stuff is being taken care of by the saints. So likewise, when they go, you know, different cities to preach the gospel, he say, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat. What else? Or what ye shall drink. Uh-huh. Nor yet for your body. Uh-huh. What ye shall put on. That's right, go ahead. Is not the life more than meat? Uh-huh. And the body more and the body than ramen? That's right, ramen. So he know what you need, so he gonna he gonna provide you with all that. Just do the job. Just get on the job. Be about his business. He's gonna take care of all that. Go ahead and read, bro. Behold, the fowls of the air, when they sow not, neither do they reap, uh -huh. nor gather into barns. That's right, go ahead. Yet your heavenly Father feed them. Uh -huh. Are ye not much better than they? That's right. We are better than they. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to consider. If the Lord take care of them, he also going to take care of you. But skip down to verse 31 and go ahead. Therefore, take no thought, uh -huh. saying, 
What shall we eat? Uh huh. Or what shall we drink? Go ahead. Or what with or what wherewither shall we be clothed? Where, wherewithal? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? That's right. And that's when you you know also when you're going out to preach the word of God, you can't be worried about like, well, okay, I got these bills and stuff at the house. I can't do this. I need to go work. I easily could have said that. You know what I'm saying? But it's a joy at preaching the word of God. It's a joy at seeing people, you know, it's like they've been loose from some type of bondage when you bring the gospel to them. You know, it's a joy at seeing that. The Lord going to take care of everything. Else. But he said, what verse is that? 31. 31. Therefore, uh, take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. Verse 32, and go ahead. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Uh-huh. Or your heavenly Father know that ye have need of all these things. That's right. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right. So just be about doing what he tell you to do. Mm -hmm. The Lord is still in the business of healing, sisters and brothers. He understands the different things that we go through. He understands. Keep in mind, this flesh and blood body is what he created. So when death came on the scene, in order for man to enter into death, that body goes through sickness. For the most part. So at the same time, he knows how to heal that body from sickness. So we still got to be about the Lord's business even in that. Because the Lord will take care of that. But he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what else? And his righteousness. Uh -huh. And all these things shall be added unto That's you. Right. So all that stuff we learned about, the bills, and how you going to eat when you go preach the gospel, who going to do this and do that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he's going to take care of everything else. That's how important it is for you to preach this gospel. Verse 34, and that's the last one. Go ahead. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. So don't worry about tomorrow. Go ahead and read. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. That's right. So you got to make it to the morrow, sister. Go ahead and read. Sufficient unto the day uh -huh. is the evil thereof. That's right. We got enough trouble in front of us in the day that we in right now. Let's deal with today. You know what I'm saying? And always be set on the word of God and doing what he say. He'll take care of everything else. So that's the lesson to preach the gospel. You must take up your cross there. I hope somebody got some understanding. I thank you for your time.